We are now done with quadratic equation. So we are going to start today discussing about quadratic inequalities. So quadratic inequalities in one variable are inequalities of the second degree involving the symbols greater than, and then we have less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or not equal. If you saw these symbols, it makes the expression an inequality. But if it is in the second degree, then that inequality is a quadratic inequality. Quadratic inequalities can be written in the following forms. First, ax squared plus bx plus c is greater than zero. ax squared plus bx plus c is less than zero. AX squared plus BX plus C is greater than or equal to zero. AX squared plus BX plus C is less than or equal to zero. Or it can be written as AX squared plus BX plus C is not equal to zero. So any expressions written in this form is considered a quadratic inequality. Now, I have here six mathematical sentences. What we are going to do is you are going to identify whether each sentence is a quadratic inequality or not. The first one, ax squared minus 2a plus 5 equals 0. Is it a quadratic inequality? Okay, very good. It is not a quadratic inequality. Why? Yes, because even though it is in the second degree, but the symbol here is equal, that makes it a quadratic equation and not a quadratic inequality. Next, number 2. 2y squared plus 5y minus 3 is greater than or equal to 0. Is it a quadratic inequality? Yes, this one is a quadratic inequality. It is in the second degree and it uses an inequality symbol which is greater than or equal to. Third, m squared plus 2m plus 4 is less than or equal to negative 2. Is it a quadratic inequality? Yes, it is a quadratic inequality. Again, it is in the second degree and it uses an inequality symbol. Fourth, c squared plus 6c plus 8 is greater than 0. Is it quadratic inequality? Yes, it is. Four, s cubed minus 3s minus 7 is less than or equal to 0. Is it a quadratic inequality? Okay, this one is not a quadratic inequality. Even though it uses an inequality symbol, this is not a quadratic inequality because this is not in the second degree. This is actually in the third degree because the highest exponent is 3. That's why it is not a quadratic inequality. And then the last one, 5D minus 6 is less than or equal to 0. Is it a quadratic inequality? Again, it is not a quadratic inequality, though it uses inequality symbol, but this is in the first degree, so it is a linear inequality and not a quadratic inequality. Okay, I hope you get it. For our next activity, given the quadratic inequalities, identify if 2 and negative 1 are solutions of the given quadratic inequalities. So we have two quadratic inequalities here. We have x squared minus 3x minus 4 is less than 0. And the other one is negative x squared minus x is greater than or equal to 0. What are we going to do is to identify whether 2 and negative 1 are solutions of these two quadratic inequality. So the question here is, how are we going to identify if it is a solution? Yes, we need to substitute the given values 2 and negative 1 to our quadratic inequalities. So let us do it one by one. The first one is x squared minus 3x minus 4 is less than 0. Let us determine if x or if 2 is a solution of the given inequality. Let us substitute 2 for x. Then we have 2 squared minus 3 times 2 minus 4 is less than 0. If we simplify, 2 squared is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, and then minus 4 is less than 0. 4 
and negative 4 is equal to 0, so the remaining will be negative 6 is less than 0. This is the resulting statement. Can we say that 2 is a solution to the given inequality? Yes, we can say that 2 is a solution to this inequality. How did we say so? Take note of the resulting statement. Negative 6 is less than 0. Is it true or false? Yes, the resulting statement is a true statement. So as we substitute 2 to our inequality, it became a true statement. That's why it is a solution to the given inequality. Now, let us check if negative 1 is also a solution to this inequality. So, if x is negative 1, then we have negative 1 squared minus 3 times negative 1 minus 4 is less than 0. If we simplify, negative 1 squared is 1, negative 3 times negative 1, that is positive 3, minus 4 is less than 0. 1 plus 3 is 4 and 4 minus 4 is 0. That is why we have 0 is less than 0. Can we say that negative 1 is a solution to our inequality? Okay, negative 1 is not a solution. Why? It is because the resulting statement is a false statement. Because 0 is not less than 0. That's why it is false. Therefore, negative 1 is not a solution to our quadratic inequality. Let me see if you get it. Let's have the second one. Negative x squared minus x is greater than or equal to 0. Take note, we have a negative here. Then we will be having that in our inequality. So if x is equal to 2, Again, you have a negative here. That is why you have a constant negative in our inequality. And our x is 2, so we have to substitute 2. If we do that, again, negative will remain. It will be constant since, again, we have a negative here. So 2 squared is 4, so magiging negative 4. And then minus 2 is greater than or equal to 0. Negative 4 minus 2 is... Negative 6 greater than or equal to 0. Is 2 a solution to our quadratic inequality? Yes, it is not a solution because negative 6 greater than is greater than or equal to 0 is a false statement. So 2 is not a solution. How about negative 1? If x is negative 1, will it make the statement true or false? Is negative 1 a solution or not? Let us find out. So if x is negative 1, again, we have a constant negative here. So you have negative, the value of x is negative 1. So you have negative 1 squared and then minus negative 1 is greater than or equal to 0. If we simplify, again, we still have a negative there that is constant. And negative 1 squared is positive 1. That's why we have here negative 1 and then negative times negative. That is positive and then greater than or equal to 0. Then what will be the resulting statement? It will become 0 is greater than or equal to 0. Is negative 1 a solution to our inequality? Yes or no? Yes, it is a solution because 0 is greater than or equal to 0 is actually a true statement. Did you get it? Okay, that's it. For the last part of our today's lessons, what do we have here is a situation. What are you going to do here is you are going to identify whether the given situation illustrates a quadratic inequality. So the situation is this. Mr. Bayani has a vacant lot in his backyard. He wants to make as many rectangular gardens as possible such that the length of each garden is 2 meters longer than its width. He also wants the area of the garden to be at least 3 squared meter. So that is our situation. Does it illustrate quadratic inequality? Let us try to find out systematically. The first one is how are we going to represent the length and the width? 
it says here that the length is 2 meters longer than the width. So if width is represented by x, how are we going to represent our length? Very good. The length will be represented as x plus 2. And then the second thing, based on the problem, how are you going to represent the desired area? This is our desired area. How do we get again the area? Yes, the area is length times width. So we will be multiplying the length and the width and we get our desired area. So what will be our expression? It will become x, the width, multiplied by x plus 2, that is the length. And then the desired area, it says that it must be at least 3 squared meter. The word at least means that is greater than or equal to. That's why we have here x plus quantity x plus 2 or x multiplied by the quantity x plus 2 is greater than or equal to 3. To simplify further, let us see if it illustrates quadratic inequality using distributive property. We have x times x, that's x squared, x times 2x, that is 2x. You are going to use addition property of equality. Positive 3 here becomes negative 3 and then we have greater than or equal to 0. As we simplify, this became the statement. Now, does the problem illustrate quadratic inequality? Yes, based on the resulting equation or inequality, the problem illustrates quadratic inequality. So again, quadratic inequalities in one variable are inequalities of the second degree involving the symbols greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or not equal to. An integer is a solution of a quadratic inequality in one variable if it makes the resulting inequality true. That's it for today. Again, this is Mam Sheila. Thank you for watching.